When the lights went out in California, how my family got through it, and 10 tips the prepper community gave us. When emergencies happen, many of us use these experiences as a testing ground to evaluate our supplies, take inventory and see if we are mentally equipped for the stresses of an emergency. Taking this a step further is taking and bouncing ideas off of the preparedness community. The preparedness community is a unique and special group of people and we look out for one another, we support one another, and ultimately we learn from one another. As many of you know, a major grid down event occurred last week in California. Our electric company was anticipating strong winds in an area and were concerned this could ignite a wildfire. Well, even though the uh, power was down, the wildfires did erupt. Now, taking a proactive approach though, they decided to cut the power to nearly 800,000 people we were given ample notice and told that the lights could be out for as long as five days. As long as we had everything we needed, we knew this would be more of a short-term inconvenience. We followed many of the rules outlined in the prepper's blueprint. What we did to prepare, and the plan. Because our perishable foods make up a majority of the grocery bills every month, our main priority was protecting them during the power disturb distribution, the power disruption. When the power went out, I added a thermometer to the refrigerator to monitor the temperature. If the temperature started increasing above a certain point, our plan was to move the food into the deep freezer. A last ditch effort to save our food investment was to preserve the food through canning. In an article on the subject, Jeremiah Johnson makes some great suggestions on using up your perishable food supply. If you have a generator, why not stack up those dehydrated machines, the, the dehydrator machines with already cooked meat and dry it out? It would be a one day risk and you could dehydrate a certain amount of it and have it at least a little longer. There's also another method. Break out your canning manuals and prepare to can. For this you'll need something a little special. Here's what I have, a Coleman two burner dual fuel stove. Yes, that green camping stove runs on white gas, Coleman fuel, or gasoline. The reason this is a goodie is that you can steadily regulate your temperature and pressure as this little gas burner stove as uh, you are monitoring your work. Such regularity is important when it comes to canning. So can away. You'll need to know your stuff, your elevation, and the proper, the proper recipes that you have in your canning manual for your ratios of seasoning and salt. Can the meat, can the veggies, can whatever you can. Better to save most of your food than, and, and than eat akin to the proverbial last meal and lose most of it. Meat can also be salted. Therefore, it would behoove you to pick up some 25 to 50 pound bags of salt and whatever can be canned can be preserved in this, can't be canned can be preserved like this. Then there's the Brinkman, the smoker, Yes, time to break out the charcoal and mesquite chips and uh, smoke the daylights out of the meat. Smoke some veggies and dehydrate them as well. It'll be a race of the likes which you'll never run. Have a wood stove? Well, you can scramble all of your eggs on the top of the stove on a baking pan. Hopefully yours has a lip. Scramble hard and then you can dry them out after cooking them. For my family, our generator wasn't working so hooking up the food dehydrator was not going to work in our situation. But we did have gas still in our home and planned on cooking and grilling away thawed out food. Our plan was that if the electricity did not come back after, on for day three, we were going to start preserving our perishables. Here was our menu during the power outage. Day one, on the first day we got rid of the bacon and some of the produce by eating BLTs for dinner. We made use of the seafood in our freezer and had fish tacos for dinner. And day two, the second day, we made breakfast tacos with eggs and cheese. And for lunch, we pan cooked mozzarella sticks that were in the freezer. For the evening, I was planning on making stop top mac and cheese, but the lights came on, so hooray! The preps, thanks to the ample notice for, from the electric company, we were able to get out our supplies and organize them before the event occurred. I was able to get all of the laundry and dishes done so you wouldn't have to worry about piles of clothes when the power came back on. As well, I set out an assortment of paper goods and plastic cutlery 
to cut down on hand washing dishes. Our preps are organized in labeled 20 gallon plastic bins, so finding our light preparedness supplies was a breeze. Here's what we took out. Two battery powered lanterns for the communal areas in the home. Five flashlights for each of us. One headlamp. 24 Kalem light sticks. An assortment of candles. Solar powered battery charger. Extra batteries. Extra paper towels and cleaning supplies. During the time of the power outage, I was able to communicate through Facebook to update my friends and share my experiences in hopes that it would help others better plan and prepare for their own emergencies. I documented my experiences on Facebook but wanted to share some of the lessons we learned along the way and the advice and tips from other preppers. Sanity favors savers for those with kids. Those of you with kids know how important it is to anticipate the child's needs. While basic survival needs should always be met, for our two-day power outage, we knew the basic needs were not an issue. Our mental health, however, was. I knew that going into this emergency, their dependence on technology was going to be a big problem, so I wanted to have some comfort for, uh, foods and activities planned that would add a bit of normalcy to the situation. Here are a few things of what I did. Apocalypse Snacks Tried to make light of the situation, we started joking at the grocery store about having them pick out apocalypse snacks and it became a joke for the duration of the emergency. The kids picked out a few things that they wanted, albeit the food items were junk food. I knew they would provide a source of fun since I did not normally buy these things. Pre-charged devices. I made a point of informing my kids on the upcoming emergency and what they needed to do. If they wanted to have power on their iPads, cell phones, etc., they needed to charge their devices and extra batteries. They each charged what they wanted to use and learned a valuable lesson in rationing their battery power. Games for years. I have been purchasing board games and puzzles for them. On the first day, my two daughters sat down and played board games for a few hours. Their favorites were playing card games, the 200-piece puzzles, and the board game of life. As well, while it was still light outside, they went outside and played. My son even joined in and we were all having a great time. Watch a movie on the iPad to surprise them. I had downloaded a few movies on the iPad. I didn't tell them about it. When it got dark, I pulled out the fully charged iPad and we all sat down and watched a movie. 10 tips from other preppers. Over the years, I asked the prepper community to offer advice on emergencies and in this case, it was no different. When I shared the fate on Facebook that we were in a grid down event, my friends gave some great advice that I felt should be shared. One, off grid refrigeration. Have lived off grid for 15 years. In the future, you may want to consider a used propane fridge from an old RV. They last forever. They are upright freezers and they use very little electricity and a few solar panels will do the job as well as give you LED lighting and charge your electronics. We have Makita batteries for lanterns and tools, energizer plugs in the wall, rechargeable flashlights that give me a flashlight and night light. And I own many of them, maybe 30. We turn a car battery into a big power bank. I installed it into an ammo box and added a car cigarette lighter to the box for charging our tablets and phone. I also own the largest battery banks I could find on Amazon. We do have a generator, Yamaha 3000. If your generator head has been sitting, it may just need a new spark plug and fuel line, so easy to fix. I'm also a prepper. It gets easier. I wish you the best. Number two, generators. Home Depot has online sales of fantastic sportsman inverter, 1000 watt generators, often for 180 bucks, including free home delivery. I bought two. Mine used just one quarter of gas in three and a half hours to run for our fridge, powered one 60 watt bulb, and charged all our cell phones. The inverter is a key component that adjusts fuel consumption to the energy requirements getting pulled by your appliances. Another prepper suggested, an 800 watt Cobra inverter is 80 bucks now, clamps onto your car battery, Amazon Prime delivers, runs your freezer or refrigerator. One hour runtime every 12 hours keeps food cold. I use Harbor Freight moving blankets to keep them cold, 
but blankets and quilts will do. Here's another tip from a, a Facebook friend. Back in the 90s, our area was hit by an ice storm. Lights out for 13 days. We luckily had a small generator and kept the furnace running. Water pump and our fridge running, but no hot water, a few lights and some outlets. At 8 o'clock when the gen ran out of gas, we went to bed. My husband was out of town. My boys and myself had to keep things going. It was a struggle, but we made it and felt pretty good about our accomplishments. Hope the new fire does not come your way. Number three, off-grid cooking sources. Notwithstanding politics at all, in our part of free Wyoming, we went without power for about 36 hours in the dead of winter and because we have a prepper mindset, did not suffer. Our wood stove insert has a nice cooking surface on top and the living room front part of the house was always toasty. We had plenty of food, candles, lamps, batteries, water unaffected. It just proves that even under the least of circumstances, being prepared is a good mindset. We also proved to our own satisfaction that seldom can we influence outside events and must move with the flow. This prepper talks about the storing coal, charcoal. Good time to buy charcoal, end of the season here in the East. Bought three the other week. Get lump also. I mix them. It works really good. I dump them in a big plastic bin with lid. Holds like three bags. Four, alternative lighting and or power sources. When we go camping, we attach Kim lights to one gallon milk jugs full of water and it actually turns into a very bright light. Another prepper made the suggestion, forget the power company, retrofit solar power to provide for one room of your, of your house. Do not connect it to the grid. Trucker refrigerators can easily run off of them in with a battery and two, with a battery or two and an inverter controller. Plus, you can have LED lighting and recharging power. 5. Emergency Communication We use handheld ham radios to communicate. Very handy, better than the cell phone. 6. Have a plan. Working on day 3, time to clean the fridge. Oroville, California, next to paradise. Wind gust then gone. Gas station still up. Barbecue, uh, quesadillas last night, yummy. Stores late night, star watching and good conversation. Hubby and son rebuilt the front stairs. So how my family will improve our preparedness endeavors? Although small scale emergencies can be inconvenient, they can also be learning experiences and always and ways to be more resilient during an emergency. While each disaster event is different, there are mistakes or holes in, our, in your preps and that can be identified and corrected before a more serious emergency occurs. A few mistakes I experienced from this grid down event was I had grown way too dependent on my deep freezer to store food. I liked deals and would pick up meat and other food items while they were on sale. And when the lights were turned off, I started second guessing my decision to store up so much perishable food. My new goal is to use up and also can some of the perishable items so that they can be stored in the pan pantry. Our battery supply is also something I want to begin bulking up. We had batteries, but our supplies on C and D batteries had definitely dwindled. With winter approaching, I would like to get more of an assortment of batteries and organize this part of our supply better. As well, our paper goods came in handy while the lights were out, but after taking stock of how many paper goods we used, paper towels especially, I would like to double this amount. One reason we got low on paper towels was we decided to do a deep clean uh, of our refrigerator when the transformer and food items into the deep freeze. I hope this helps some of you better prepare for off-grid events. Please check out Prepper's Blueprint with 52 Weeks to Preparedness for more information. So this article was originally published on Ready Nutrition on October 13, 2019, and it's on Natural Blaze by Tess Pennington. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, 
you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.